Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley here for EllenHudson.com. Thanks for joining me today. In this month's edition of the Ellen Hudson Newsletter, we are talking about gift boxes galore. And we're going to put together four gift boxes. All of these dies are from the Essentials by Ellen collection. And I thought this would be a great idea because... So many of us are missing people, and so many of us need a little pick-me-up, and I thought these little gift boxes would be the perfect way to leave a little something on someone's doorstep and let them know that you're missing them and that you're thinking about them. So I'm going to be working with, this is the two-in-one gift box, and this is a cool gift box because you can assemble it tall or lengthwise. I'm also going to be working with the Bon Bon gift box here. This is great because it just, it's so easy to open and close and you can decorate it and open it without kind of messing it up. I guess there's ways of doing that with each one, but this is a fun little box here. I'm going to be working with the house gift box and the add-ons that go with that. This is great for um, the staying at home theme. <laughs> and finally, I'm gonna be working with the parcel box, which requires zero adhesive if you choose to do it that way. Now I really wanted my gift boxes to be in craft and so I started there and I built my color scheme around it and this is what I landed on. I landed on Catherine Pooler Bellini Lemongrass and Coral Cabana with accents of this black and white stripe as well as gold and I'm going to show you how I created that black and white striped pattern paper because I think this is the best kept secret in card making. <laughs> Everybody needs a good striped stamp because you can make your own pattern paper. It's perfect for accents on gift boxes and cards, and you can make as much and as in many colors as you want. So I am using the striped background stamp from the Essentials by Ellen collection, and I'm stamping it onto some white cardstock using some Gina K Obsidian Amalgam ink. Now I'm gonna tell you something. All of my stamp pads seem really dry right now, and it's been super hot where I am, and my craft room gets the afternoon sun. And even though I keep the shades closed to try to keep it a little cooler. I think a lot of my ink pads need re-inking right now and this obsidian ink pad is no exception so I've ordered the re-inker for that but you can see I didn't get a great stamping on the first try. That's okay. I re-inked and I stamped again and I have some great black and white pattern paper to accent not only these gift boxes but some card projects with as well. So now that I have my pattern paper created I'm going to start cutting all of the bases for my gift boxes because I know, I know I'm making one of every design. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut all the pieces that I need. And I'm starting with the Bon Bon box. Now for the Bon Bon box, you need two of these bases here. I'm going to show you the assembly of each of these boxes later on in the video. Now I'm going to move on. And when you are die cutting on your cutting pads, you want to make sure you don't have any paper scraps on there because it can dent your cardstock that you're cutting in the future. So make sure you clean your cutting pads between each pass of the die cutting machine. And now I'm moving on to the parcel box. Now the parcel box is fabulous because you only need one of them. And like I mentioned before, you don't have to use adhesive to put this together if you don't want to. Now the third box that I am cutting is the two-in-one gift box. I have never put this one together before. It's been in my stash for a little bit. And I'm going to tell you, this is a great size box. I need two of these to create the box. And all of these I'm cutting out of half sheets of Nina Desert Storm cardstock. And finally, I'm going to cut the house box. Now the house box does require a six inch wide piece rather than a five and a half inch wide piece, but you only need one of those. So for all of these boxes, I think I used maybe two, two and a half sheets of cardstock. So here are all of my box bases die cut and ready to go. And now we're going to get into the assembly of all of these. So the first box I'm gonna to put together is the two in one gift box. This is a great box. I think you could put a little hand sanitizer, maybe curl up a little mask in there. This would be great to leave on someone's doorstep. And honestly, I cannot wait to hear what you guys would put in each of these gift boxes because I think you guys come up with the greatest ideas. Um, so leave them in the comments below and let me know what you would put in each one of these gift boxes. 
Now, all of these dies have the score lines pre-scored. So when you run it through the die cut machine, it creates not only the box cut, but it also scores your fold lines in there. So I like to actually fold the wrong way on the score line to get it started and then fold it back over and reinforce it with a bone folder. So you actually want the indented part to be the outside of the box. So if you fold it the wrong way and then to kind of get it started and then fold it the right way to where that indention is towards the outside of the box and the little kind of mountain is towards the inside of the box, um, it just really makes folding these score lines very easy, especially on these tiny little tabs. So now that I have all of my score lines folded and ready to go, I'm going to mask off a portion of the front of this box. And I just want to stamp this stamp set. This is, oh, what is it called? <laughs> it is brand new from The Essentials by Ellen Lyon. Let me look it up. Okay, this stamp set is called You Should Know. It's by Brandy Kincaid from The Essentials by Ellen Lyon. And I've prepped the surface of my box with my powder tool and I'm stamping this beautiful floral pattern using some Versamark ink. I'm going to be doing some embossing on this craft paper, which is white embossing on craft is like, I mean, is there anything really better than that? I mean, it's pretty good. <laughs> So I've added my white embossing powder and I'm heat setting that with my heat tool. And then I'm going to take this back over to my Misty and I'm going to reposition my floral stamp. I did need to do a little more masking. So I just grabbed a large post-it and put it over that top flap. And I am going to stamp this again so that the front of this box is filled with this beautiful embossed floral pattern. Now I did want to mention I am using the new Misty 2.0. They've done a few improvements to the Misty and I am really happy with it. One of the improvements is the addition of metal hinges. They used to be plastic before. They're metal now. They feel super sturdy. There is a little bit of a um, kind of a garage for your magnet there over on the side. And the ruler has, um, it is debossed the it's engraved all of the dimensions so it's no longer a sticker it's actually kind of molded into the outer part of the misty it also has a little lip which makes lifting the lid easier so there's some improvements on the misty and these are available now in the ellen hudson shop so head on over there if you're interested in checking that out and we can talk more about those improvements later but for now let's put together a box <laughs> So I've done all of my embossing. I removed my masking paper or tape that I had along the front of that box. And now I'm taking some strong tape adhesive and I'm adding it to the flaps. Now I'm going to add this to three sides. And that's because I want one of these uh, end pieces to be able to tuck in and open without there being adhesive on it. So I kind of lined this up, figured out which end I wanted to permanently adhere and I added adhesive that strong tape to the tabs on that end there. Now I'm removing the backer to that strong tape and you're going to see that I have one of these ends pointed up and one of the ends pointed down and that's going to create my box and I'm lining up the edge of that second piece along the fold line of that tab with the adhesive on it. So I'm gonna connect these two pieces. And I like to kind of pick up my box and fold it over so that I can see that when this piece is folded, those edges meet up really nicely. And when I get that all lined up, I can press that into place. So now I, ha now I have these two pieces connected and I'm going to remove the adhesive backer from the other piece and I'm just gonna fold that into place to create the base of my box. Then I can remove the adhesive along these tabs that are that bottom piece and I can tuck this up into the box to close up the bottom of the box. And in order to make sure I have a good seal on those tabs to the inside of the box, I'm just gonna take my bone folder and press those into the box. So now I have my box created and I'm just gonna decorate it. So I have a little tag here 
This tag is actually a part of the two-in-one box die set from the Essentials by Ellen line. I have a little stamped and die cut heart, which is from the high five stamp and coordinating die set from the Essentials by Ellen line. And finally, I have this hello that I've die cut from some gold cardstock. That is also a die from the Essentials by Ellen line. And keep in mind, I will have all of these products linked over at the EllenHudson.com blog. That'll be linked below in the YouTube description. And I will have the featured products in the description at YouTube as well. So I'm just finishing up decorating this little tag here. I added a piece of that black and white striped pattern paper that I created with my stamp. And I'm just tying this tag along the top of this finishing that off with a little bit of black and white twine. And that is my first gift box for today. I absolutely love the way this turned out with that floral pattern embossed on the box. I think it is adorable. So now let's move on to the Bon Bon Box. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> bon Bon Box. Once again, all of the score lines are um, pre-pressed into the paper for you. So you can just fold one way and then fold the other way. Reinforce that with your bone folder. This box comes together so quickly. You do need the two pieces, like I mentioned before. And it kind of is like, it reminds me of those petal cards. Have you ever made a petal card? This totally reminds me of a petal card in the way that it goes together. Now I did want to create some color on this box. And so I'm going to create some stripes of color using the inks that I chose. And that's because I don't have cardstock that perfectly matches these colors of Catherine Pooler ink that I chose. So I just grabbed the Painted Stripes stamp from the Essentials by Ellen line, and I'm inking up this large stripe with the various colors of Catherine Pooler inks that I chose for my projects today, and I'm stamping this onto some Nina Solar White 80-pound cardstock. Now once I have all of these colors stamped, I'm going to take this over to my trimmer, and I'm going to trim this down into quarter-inch pieces. I just trimmed off the kind of rough edge of this Painted Stripe. And then I'll make these quarter inch pieces of this stamped stripe. Now this is going to act like my colored cardstock for me. So I'm just going to use these to add stripes to my Bon Bon box. So once I have these strips of all of the colors, I was able to get like three or four out of every color here. I am going to line up my Bon Bon box using this grid mat and I am going to adhere them onto each edge. So I have the flat part of the Bon Bon box lined up with one of the lines on my grid mat, and I'm just placing these along that about a quarter to a half inch up from the bottom of this box, and I'm just doing it in the same um, order on each side of the box. So I'm gonna do this to all four pieces. You're gonna see, I'm gonna leave this here. I'm gonna add adhesive to the other side of this box and just kind of make sure they're along that same line on my grid mat, and then just press them on to the other side of this Bon Bon box. Then I can take my scissors and trim away the excess here. So once I have that trimmed away, I'm going to rotate this and do the same thing on the other side of the box so that I will end up with stripes going around all four sides of the box. Now because this box does kind of curve a little bit as it folds up, it does not perfectly line up, but I think it looks great in the end. So like I mentioned before, just lining this up along my grid mat again and going up about a quarter to a half inch from the base of this box and adding those stripes. Now once I trim those up, I can go ahead and assemble my box. And this only needs adhesive in one area. So I am going to take one of these squares that's on the inside of the box, that's the side of the box that I haven't decorated, and I'm gonna cover it in adhesive. And I'm just gonna stack that other square right on top of it. Now you wanna make sure that your handles are across from each other and the sides with the slits are across from each other. So these two pieces that are alike are across from each other and the, two, the other two pieces that are alike are across from each other. Then I can just fold these up with the handles meeting in the middle and take those little slits and place them down over those handles and that's what holds the box together. I think this is absolutely adorable and I love it with the little stripes on it. I added a little bit of black and white twine to the top of that box to tie it closed and I have this little tiny tag. This is from the mini tags die set from the Essentials by Ellen line. 
I stamped a little tiny greeting on that that says love you and I layered that up with a gold die cut heart and I'm placing that on the front of my box and I did add a little gold washi tape like a polka dot washi tape along the bottom of that tag as well and that finishes up the bonbon box. So now we're moving on to the house box and this is a really large piece with a lot of places that fold. And so I think this one can look a little intimidating, but it's really not a hard box to put together at all. So I'm starting by reinforcing all of those fold lines and just kind of pressing them down with my bone folder. And before I adhere this together, I am going to use the house box add-on dies to create a little door in the front of my house. And I'm also going to use that little curved window die that's a part of the house box add-on die set to create some windows on the side of my house. And you can see as I position these dies, I'm just using a little purple tape to hold them in place as I run them through my die cut machine so I know they're exactly where I want them. Now this gift box is fun because when you put it all together, there's a working door, there's some windows where you can see into the gift box. So I think this is absolutely so much fun. Now I die cut that door again, it creates the hinge. I've done it out of some white cardstock and I use that painted stripe again to add some color to my door. And I'm just gonna trim off along that score line that it creates to allow me to layer this over the working door that's on my box. And I'm just finding various ways to add a little bit of color to this house box because I don't want just a big brown box. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense. So to add a little more color, I am taking these landscape dies from the Essentials by Ellen line. I've stamped that painted stripe again out of the lemongrass ink, and I'm creating some little grass borders that I can adhere along the base of this house to create a little bit of grass. So to adhere these on, I am just using a little liquid adhesive and I'm adding them on to the base of this house box. And then once they're on and dried, I will go ahead and reinforce those score lines again. I do think it's important to mention that for all of these little decorative pieces that I'm creating, like the grass border and the stripes on the bonbon box, I'm using an 80 pound cardstock. That's gonna make it more pliable and allow me to kind of mold it around these score lines or the folds of the box. It's gonna make it a lot easier to work with. So on those decorative pieces, you, you're gonna wanna use an, a lighter weight cardstock, not a super heavy weight cardstock. So now that I have my decorations added to the box while it's all flat, I'm gonna go ahead and add my adhesive along the tabs. Now, a good rule of thumb when you're working with any kind of box is that a lot of times your adhesive is going to go on these little tabs. And that's exactly where I've put this strong double-sided tape on this house box. So you're gonna notice there's these little flaps that fold up and that's gonna create the bottom of my box. So I've removed the backer on the adhesive and I'm just folding this up and folding the walls of my house around those tabs along the bottom. Now my house was looking good, but I was feeling like it was still too dark. And so I took another one of the house box die cuts that I've die cut out of white cardstock and I'm blending on some of this Catherine Pooler Bellini ink to create these gables that will then have that peach color and kind of lighten up my house a little bit. So just like the door, I adhered those over the existing gables that were there. And I'm gonna finish my box off by adding this little roof topper that comes in the house box add-on die set. And you can see I added a little bit of black and white twine and this sentiment that says staying in is the new going out. <laughs> That is from the Voices in My Head stamp set that just came out. It's an add-on. I think it's the third volume of those, but I thought that was perfect for this little house box. So now it's time to put together our final box for the day. This is the parcel box, and I've saved the easiest for last because literally you don't have to have adhesive for this. I tie these closed, and they're perfect just like that. So I'm starting out by folding those score lines in the wrong direction. 
Then I'm going to fold them over and reinforce them and press them down really good with my bone folder going in the correct direction. So that's just my little tip for working with these boxes. And sometimes the tabs are kind of hard to get started in folding. But if you go the opposite direction first and then go in the correct direction, it makes it a lot easier. Now I'm going to do this stripe detail once again on this parcel box, but this time I'm not working around several different areas that are kind of separate. So I can just go straight across the back of this parcel box and place them onto the box using a little bit of tape runner adhesive. I can trim off the ends and then just once again fold along those score lines. Again, I'm using an 80 pound cardstock to make this process really easy and you can see that when I fold these over, those stripes are gonna meet up and create that fun little pattern there along my box. Now, once you fold all of these tabs in like I'm doing now, you can choose to adhere it closed with some adhesive or you can do what I do. I'm just wrapping some black and white twine around it and tying it to where it, it ties closed. And then I decided I wanted to decorate this a little bit. So I took a speech bubble die. This is from the speech bubble die set from the Essentials by Ellen Line. And I stamped this, I Miss Your Face. This is from the Voices in My Head Volume 3 stamp set. And then I took this Hello stamp. This is from the Totally Random Sayings Volume 3 stamp set from the Essentials by Ellen Line. I stamped that in the Coral Cabana ink. And then I added a little gold die cut heart. Now I thought it would be fun to have this little girl where this was, this speech bubble was kind of coming out of her head. So I'm taking my box, I opened it up into my mini Misty. This is the Hero Arts mini Misty. It's a black mini Misty. And I've mounted the little hair piece from this mini Voices in My Head stamp set. And I'm stamping that in the Gina K Obsidian Amalgam ink. Then I stamped her little face there and neck area, and then her eyes and nose and mouth. And so I'm not gonna color her, I'm just allowing her to be stamped on there, and then I have that little speech bubble right above her head, have the little twine there, and that finishes off my parcel box. So here's a look at all of the boxes that we created today. I love that they all have the same kind of color theme and um, repeated elements throughout it. It makes a really cute little ensemble here, but these are gonna be great for dropping off little gifts to friends who maybe need some encouragement right now. Maybe you know some people who live alone and could really just use a little pick-me-up. This would be a perfect thing to just leave on their doorstep. You don't have to see them and expose them in any way, but you can just leave it on their doorstep with a little goodie inside. And I can't wait to hear in the comments below what kind of goodies you guys think would be perfect for each one of these boxes. So just kind of drop that in the comments below. As always, I will have links to the featured products used in these projects in the description at YouTube, but head on over to the EllenHudson.com blog. It'll be linked in the description below. Over there, you'll find more still shots, more information, and a complete list of supplies. As always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Ellen Hudson YouTube channel so you won't miss any of our paper crafting and card making video tutorials here. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the very end. You know if you've made it this far, you are one of my favorites. <laughs> if you want to subscribe to the Ellen Hudson YouTube channel, go ahead and click that button on the left side of the screen. And here's a couple more video tutorials I thought you might enjoy.